Welcome back, True Believers and all you Merry Marvelites, to the very first episode of Marvel's Midnight Suns 101, which I'm very excited to be able to finally provide for you today. And if you're someone who might be new to my channel or my 101 series as a whole, just think of it as your one-stop spot for anything and everything that you need to know regarding any and all upcoming video games. And to reference the other games that I have already covered with my 101 series, that would obviously refer to both of the Insomniac Spider-Man games with Spider-Man and PS4 and Miles Morales, as well as Marvel's Avengers and even the upcoming Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game. But of course, it looks like we're finally able to add another interesting title onto the 101 playlist with the latest AAA Marvel video game that has been revealed, none other than Marvel's Midnight Suns, which again is being directly developed by Firaxis Games, who you may know as the developers of the XCOM series, as well as being published by 2K Games, who you also may know from the Borderlands series. And while we are scheduled to receive our first official gameplay debut of Marvel's Midnight Suns on September 1st, there has actually been quite a lot of massive info that has been revealed about the game ever since its initial reveal during Gamescom that does fully dive into the main story that the game will have, as well as some very intriguing gameplay elements. So both of these articles that we are going to be reading off of do come from the Marvel Entertainment website directly, as well as a very interesting write-up from Polygon.com, which I will leave both as links in the description below. So to begin with the story synopsis for Midnight Suns, as well as getting some developer insights about the game as a whole, it does go on to state on the Marvel article, Through a twisted marriage of magic and science, the nefarious force known as Hydra has revived Lilith, mother of demons, after centuries of slumber. Lilith will stop at nothing to complete an ancient prophecy and summon her evil master, Cthon. Pushed to the brink, the Avengers desperately look to fight fire with Hellfire by enlisting the help of the Midnight Suns. Where within the case of the game's universe, we do see a couple of new faces form the Midnight Suns team compared to what we know from the comics, that of which being Nico Minoru, who is a runaway character, Blade, Magic, and the more recent iteration of Ghost Rider with Robbie Reyes. And as a sidebar, even though I do think these characters are cool in their own respective ways, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that down the line we might see some other characters that we know from the comics to form the Midnight Suns, like Morbius the Living Vampire, and of course Moon Knight. But moving on with the article, all those characters I just listed are young heroes with powers deeply rooted in the supernatural formed to prevent the very prophecy Lilith aims to fulfill. Together, they resurrect an ancient warrior, the Hunter, Lilith's forsaken child and the only hero known to have ever defeated her. And to get a better perspective about the game's upbringing, we do have some very interesting and meaningful quotes from Bill Roseman himself, who again is the Vice President of Creative at Marvel Games, as well as the main Creative Director of Marvel's Midnight Suns of Jake Solomon. Whereas Bill initially goes on to describe, we're thrilled to team with Firaxis Games, who combine a history of building outstanding tactical games with an authentic love of Marvel's supernatural side. Marvel's Midnight Sons offers players the chance to not only live alongside legendary heroes, but to also experience an all-new original story that dives deep into the monstrous shadows of the Marvel Universe. And coming from Jake Solomon himself, I grew up reading and loving Marvel comics. To be entrusted with these characters and their stories is an honor for me and the team. If you're a Marvel fan or an RPG fan or a fan of tactics games, Marvel's Midnight Suns will make these beloved characters come alive in a way that you've never seen before. So as this was revealed on the game's official website, Marvel's Midnight Suns is in fact a tactical RPG, given the fact that again, this game is developed by the creators of the XCOM series. However, even though this game is technically being labeled as a tactical RPG, there is quite a lot of gameplay information that has been unveiled for it, which portrays this game in a very interesting light, which I do think is going to differ from the standard XCOM norm that you might be familiar with. And in fact, it does get me a little bit more excited to see exactly how the game is going to handle its gameplay and interactive format. So as all this new information comes from a Polygon article who was able to fully interview Jake Solomon about the game structure, they do go on to state the next game from Furax's XCOM team is set in an obscure corner of the Marvel Comics universe. Titled Marvel's Midnight Suns, development of the turn-based role-playing game is led by Jake Solomon, designer of XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and XCOM 2. The big draw here are the heroes and anti-heroes, many of whom have never worked together before in any previous Marvel storyline. Furaxis confirmed that Iron Man, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Blade, Nico Minoru, Magic, Robbie Reyes as Ghost Rider, 
and Wolverine will all be playable. There will be a total of 13 allied heroes in all, drawn from the Avengers, X-Men, Runaways, and beyond. And so far, those are a total of 9 of the 13 characters that are set to be within this game, so I am very curious to learn exactly who the other 4 heroes are going to be. And again, hopefully 2 of those could be Morbius and Moon Knight, and the other 2 might be some newer characters that might give a fresh vibe to the Midnight Suns team. And while the article did analyze earlier that this is in fact going to be a fully turn-based game, this next statement does give me a little bit more reassurance that they are able to do something a bit different compared to what we've seen before with the XCOM games. Because as it currently stands, there are zero mechanics shared between XCOM and the Midnight Suns. In Marvel's Midnight Suns, players will take on the role of the Hunter, an all-new character designed in partnership with Marvel Comics. The Hunter is there to stand in for the player, and will be highly customizable in both appearance and combat ability. Solomon said that there are over 40 different superpowers available to the player across a wide spectrum from light, mirroring the most traditional of the superheroes in the game, like Iron Man and Captain America, to dark, mirroring more occult anti-heroes such as Ghost Rider and Blade. Players will embark on turn-based missions with three other superheroes. They and their compatriots' skills will level up and improve over time. How those skills are advanced is perhaps the biggest departure from the XCOM franchise. In between missions, players will have free reign to explore the Abbey, an all-new headquarters area designed in partnership with Marvel Comics and its grounds. Solomon said players will explore it in third person, using their time to develop relationships with the other superheroes. And for this part, in my opinion, this is where things start to get really darn interesting. Because Robbie Reyes, the new Ghost Rider, he may want to play video games. Captain Marvel may want to go and spar with you. Tony Stark may want to go and play cards. You choose how to hang out with them. Choose how you talk with them and give them gifts. There's also social clubs around the Abbey that you can join, and that affects your friendship with heroes. Some of these are pretty lighthearted since the story is dark enough. And to round all this info out with the combat mechanics, focusing fire in order to take down a single powerful enemy was key to conquering the puzzle-like missions in XCOM and XCOM 2. But this time around, players will be taking down multiple enemies at a time with powerful attacks that have a much larger impact and range than traditional plasma or laser weaponry. Solomon said players will also be interacting more with the environment, leaping off cars, pulling down light poles, and kicking objects all the way across the map. So keep in mind that all of this information, even though that does sound cool with interacting with objects in the environment, is still being utilized in a turn-based combat system. But on the flip side, all the social elements that were described previously about the Abbey and interacting with the other characters kind of gives me a flat-out Persona vibe, which I am totally 110% down for. Now, if you guys know me, I am a massive Persona fan, primarily Persona 5 Royal being my personal game of the year of 2020, and even though this is not going to be a Japanese role-playing game, it does seem like they are trying to extremely differentiate from what we have seen with the XCOM games and give Marvel and the overall characters of the Midnight Suns a completely different twist. So if we're going to be able to have sort of like a confidant system in the game where you can interact with each individual character of the Midnight Suns roster, get to know them more, level up your rank with them and level them up when you are playing as them during combat, and just grow that overall bond with each character within the game through gameplay and story moments seamlessly, I do think that is going to be a very interesting mechanic to fully experience within the game itself. Now, whether or not this game is going to be able to flawlessly pull off that team interactivity within the gameplay and story sequences like what we saw in Persona 5 Royal is still to be determined as of now, but I do think we might be able to get more of an insight about this once we see the official gameplay reveal on September 1st. And knowing they were able to play as this original Marvel character of the Hunter alongside of also being able to play as all these major Marvel characters is definitely going to reassure a lot of people who who thought this might be like a similar situation to what we saw with a previous Marvel game, which wasn't received all that well like that of X-Men Destiny. Still, this is a pretty major step from what we've seen from Firaxis games in the past, so I'm really hoping they're truly able to pull this off by the time the game fully releases in March of 2022. But with all that said, everybody, that is the video that I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What are your current thoughts on Marvel's Midnight Suns, and did any of this new information that we do have about the game 
game get you more interested within it, or possibly turn you off knowing that it's directly going to be a turn-based combat game. Again, for someone like me who is a major fan of a game like Persona 5 and even some of the older turn-based Final Fantasy games, I definitely think that I could see myself enjoying this just as an interesting game, but I don't necessarily know if it's going to be on par with another type of AAA Marvel game like what we've seen with the Insomniac Spider-Man franchise. But regardless, I am very curious to learn more about this game and fully react to the gameplay demo once we do see it be unveiled on September 1st. But until that time comes, everyone, thank you all so much for watching again. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy. And until next time, true believers, stay merry Marvelites, and peace out.